Good morning. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your Sunday morning prayer time. It is February 11th, 2024. Let's open our time with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you today for this wonderful opportunity to spend time together to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're asking now that your blessing would be upon this prayer time in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, because it is Sunday, this is the Lord's Day, and we are going to rejoice and be glad. Father, thank you today for the opportunity to be together as God's people. Of course, Lord, we know the value of meeting together in the house of the Lord. So I ask that, Lord, every congregation, including my own at Cornerstone Community Church in St. Albert, that, Father, there would be a breakthrough today. A revival would begin to happen. And, Lord, we're going to pray towards that wonderful uh, thought today. You know, Lord, we know that our country needs revival. So how does revival start? Well, it starts by men and women getting hungry for God. So I pray today that, Lord, you would create a hunger. Jesus said in the Beatitudes, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Lord, there seems to be an awful lot of people these days that, Lord, are satisfied with where they are. Now, the reason why is because the simple fact is that, Lord, they have put their hearts on the wrong thing. Jesus said, wherever your heart is, that is where your treasure is. And wherever your treasure is, that is where your heart is. Unfortunately, Lord, today, many, many people, including some Christians, Lord, have put their hearts on pride and pleasure and possessions. They are satisfied with the material things that they have. They are uh, satisfied, Lord, with uh, going after a vocation or maybe, you know, getting that latest gizmo or that latest um, car or house. But Father, they need to recognize, and this is a very important point, that this is not our home. This is not where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be like Abraham, who understood that he was looking for a city whose maker and builder is God. Lord, one of the things that really fascinates me about Abraham is this. When you called him out of the Ur of the Chaldees, when you spoke to him, in the way that you spoke to him, Abraham went to talk to his wife, Sarah. And he said, Sarah, we're going to be moving out of the Ur of the Chaldees. Now, most likely, she had a home with uh, people who were working with her. And uh, he said, we're going to go live in the Canaan land. And we're going to habitate for there. Now, she thought that she would probably have a home. And also, as well, all the luxuries that go with it. Little did she know that she would spend the rest of her life living in tents, however elaborate it was. And Abraham was extremely wealthy. He could have very easily built a home, but he dwelt in a tent his entire life. So did his son, his son Isaac and also his son Jacob. They all lived in temps. They lived in temporary dwellings that we would look at today. We would call it camping. Either way, each one of these men were not looking towards the materialistic things. They had their eyes fixed on what the Lord could provide. And Father, that is what we need to do as well. Yes, we need to take our eyes off of the things of this world and focus on the things that are eternal. Lord, we need to remember that this is not as good as it can be. Lord, just a couple of days ago, in fact, 
last night, not this night, but the night before, you showed me heaven. And I was talking about that with my wife. You see, I had a dream just before I woke up uh, yesterday morning. And it was, I was in heaven. And it was an absolutely beautiful place. There was freedom there. There was joy. There was peace. It was a beautiful city that I was walking through. Everyone was happy. Everyone, and, and one of the things that I saw in this dream was the fact that, Lord, um, ev there was no temptation there. There was no sorrow. There was no um, uh, sadness. People were happy. There were peace and love and beautiful music in the background. Father, it was glorious. I had never seen a place as beautiful as what I saw that day. And Father, I'm grateful because in the times past, Lord, you, you allowed me, for example, to look into the uh, place of heaven. But Lord, that was the very first time that I was actually in there. Now, Lord, this doesn't make me any more spiritual, and I'm not going to spend any more time talking about it. But Lord, I want people to know that we have a destination. And Lord, today, I want people to know that uh, you have a place prepared for them. In fact, Jesus said in the Upper Room Discourse, when whenever we talk about the Upper Room Discourse, we're always talking about John chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, where Jesus, where John, I should get, says, gives us an intimate view of what Jesus was talking about, his last instructions to his disciples. And what I love about John chapter 17 is when Jesus prays, he prays for his disciples, he prays for all believers, and then he prays for himself. The very last thing that Jesus did was pray for those of us who would follow him. Lord, that was beautiful. Now, what Jesus did say in John chapter 14, verse number three, he says, I go to prepare a place for you and where I am, you shall be also. Lord, that's so wonderful to know that you have prepared a place for us, that we are living in the light of of eternity. And Lord, that's why we need to be ever present about what is going on in our world. We are to watch and we are to pray. We are to have knowledge and discernment, Lord. We need to have the information and we need to know how to pray and also apply the information that we are currently looking at. So Father, today we need revival. Because, Lord, we don't know when you are coming back. And, Father, we need to have a fire. We need to have a zeal. We need to have, Lord, reformation in our society today. Lord, we are looking at a society that, Lord, is getting more and more wicked. Now, I know that there are some who subscribe to the idea well, there's really nothing that we can do about our society as it gets wicked. That is the farthest thing from the truth. Lord, when I think of Daniel and I think of Joseph and I think about the fact that, Lord, they were living in an incredibly heathen and hedonistic society, societies that, Lord, were doing appalling things, horrific things. And yet these men were able to navigate, not only navigate, but influence those societies with righteousness. I mean, when, for example, when Joseph was elevated to the position of prime minister, he was able not only to help and save the Egyptian families and the people, but also as well his own family. It was under his wise counsel and his leadership that 
Egypt was saved from a devastating famine. Daniel, for example, was able to help guide and direct Babylon and then later on Medo-Persia from total disaster. Because Lord, when you have absolute rulers, you can also have absolute, uh, complete and total uh, chaos and catastrophe. And these two men were strategically placed, Lord, to be able, Lord, to save their society. When I think of Esther, for example, she was a young um, orphan girl. And yet, Lord, you raised her up into the very echelons, to the queen of Persia. And through her influence, Lord, she kept her husband from uh, creating genocide and was able also as well to save her people. And then when her uh, uncle, Mordecai, was elevated after the death of the sinister minister Haman, he worked on behalf of his people, but not only on behalf of his people, but all people in the Persian Empire. Father, we need godly, righteous, prayerful, uh, holy, sanctified leaders today. And Lord, we need you to raise up the next Daniel, the next Esther, the next Mordecai, the next Joseph. Lord, you need to raise up the next Isaiah, who is able to influence, Lord, and become what we would call a prophet statesman. We need those type of people right now. And so, Lord, we stand in the gap right now for godly people. I know that today, being a godly leader is commonly known as something that our society doesn't want. But Father, we're going to turn our society around right now in the name of Jesus. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. That's why we're praying for revival. We are praying, Lord, and this is one of my dreams. I would love to see 10 million Christians. Father, in the land of Canada. You know, I am so grateful for the beginning of Canada's uh, existence as a country. When one of our confederation fathers was looking at Psalm 72, verse number 8, and he was praying about what the legacy and also as well what the outcome of the nation of Canada would be, and when he proposed Psalm 72, verse number 8, to his fellow Confederation fathers, that scripture said that the Lord will have dominion from sea to sea. And they agreed that this is what they would want to see the legacy of Canada has been. So that's what we have on our peace tower. Now, Lord, we know that from time to time, there are individuals who come to power who uh, are our prime minister, that are not godly in any way. But Father, that does not stop the Lord from reigning in the nation of Canada or using the nation of Canada in such a powerful way. I, in one of my previous prayer times, I talked about Young Gi Cho, who during the 1970s, 80s, and even into the new uh, generation of, or the new millennia of 2000 and the 21st century. He was the pastor of the largest church in the world. And he was invited to the nation of Canada to uh, speak to us. And uh, on his way over here, the Lord showed him uh, that the, there was going to be a nation with a maple leaf. He had never seen a maple leaf before. And uh, he was pondering it. And he said, this particular nation is going to be a nation that is going to be healing for the nations. And so when he got off the plane in Toronto, he was uh, driving with his host through the, uh, the countryside towards the place where he was going to be ministering. And as he got out of the automobile, he noticed a tree sitting just outside the particular area or the facility that he was going to um, 
he was going to minister in. And he walked over and he looked at the leaf of the tree. And he said, what tree is this? They said, it is a maple leaf. And then he explained to his host how that God had showed him the nation uh, with the, this particular uh, maple leaf, this particular leaf was going to bring healing to the nations. He's, and the host said, well, you see, and, and then the host showed him the flag of Canada, which was, of course, has the maple leaf on it. And that's when Yang Gi Cho said, this nation of Canada is going to be a nation that is going to bring healing to the nation. It is going to be a godly example. Lord, that was near the end of the, of the 1970s. Father, I am standing here today remembering that story and praying that story into me. I'm believing that, Lord, Canada can and will be a nation that will bring healing. And Lord, the way that we're going to see that happen is revival. So I'm asking, Lord, today, being the the um, being Sunday, Father, that there is going to be revival. You are going to move powerfully and effectively, Lord, in so many churches today. I pray, especially, Lord, right now, that each and every prayer room and each and every place of prayer, because I know that, Lord, many congregations have a prayer room where people pray, where people meet with God. Father, I ask that, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, that, Lord, you would open up the windows of heaven, that you would bring a blessing, Lord, upon that prayer room right now. And Lord, we pray for the institution of prayer into our services right now by the blood, right now by the word, and right now by the name. I ask that, Lord, right now, that you would open up, Lord, those wonderful touches of prayer. That, Lord, today we would have a, uh, a desire, we would have a hunger and thirst, Lord, for a move of God, a breakthrough right now. In fact, I love what it says in Revelation chapter 22. It says, the spirit and the bride say, come. And it says, all who are thirsty, come. Father, we know that society right now, there is thousands, maybe millions of people, Lord, in my country of Canada. But I know that there are millions around the world that are so hungry for truth, so hungry for something that is real, something that will satisfy the deepest longing of their souls. Back in 1969, Burt Bacharach wrote a song and Dion Warwick so, uh, wrote, sang that song. And they said, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Little did they know that Lord just in that same area of California, there was another young man whose name was uh, young uh, was um, Andre Crouch. Andre Crouch was uh, writing another song, and it was called "Jesus is the Answer for the World Today." Above him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. On one uh, one song was making the statement that the world needs love, and the other song was telling them that the personification of love, the individual who had the face of love, was the answer being Jesus Christ. So, Father, today I pray with every fiber of my being that, Lord, this would be the day that you would begin, O oh God, to answer the query of people's hearts. They need love. They want pure love. They want sweet love. They want compassionate love. And we know that that love is found in Jesus Christ. So Lord, today, would you open up the windows of heaven? Would you bring that blessing right now in Jesus' name? Would you give us, Lord, that breakthrough right now 
in that area. Father, we're believing for revival. Along that lines, Lord, we're going to pray. Lord, we're going to pray today that you're going to bring people to the house of the Lord. We're asking that, Lord, you would bring children, young people, young adults, young families, families with teenagers, empty nesters, and seniors, Lord, to the house of God. I pray today that you would bring our unsaved loved ones. Lord, people that we care about. We have a wonderful promise. It's Acts 16, 31 that says not only are we going to be saved, but our household as well. Lord, we know that the biblical model, for example, is household salvation. We saw that in the house of Cornelius, Lydia's house, the Philippian jailer's house, Crispus and Stephanus. Entire households would come to know the Lord. We're going to believe for that today. We're going to believe that, Lord, today the church is going to come alive. That, Lord, today there is going to be a breakthrough today in our churches. Lord, we're going to believe today that the disenfranchised, those who have, for various reasons, Lord, decided to stay home and, Lord, watch TV. That's something that happened during the pandemic. People were not able to go to the house of the Lord. And so what did they do? They got into the habit of watching church online. And I understand that. If you can't get out for physical reasons or because you're a senior or a shut-in and you're not able to get out, I understand that watching online is a good option. But if you're not in that position, you should be in the house of the Lord. So I'm praying for the disenfranchised. I'm praying for the prodigal and the backslider. Lord, those who knew you at one time, but for various reasons, Lord, have decided to leave that wonderful salvation. We're believing that, Lord, they're going to have that aha moment today. They're going to come to themselves and they're going to say, I am coming home to the house of the Lord. Then I'm praying, Lord, for the unsaved. Lord, there are people today who have heard the message of Jesus Christ. And they have chosen to return once again to the house of the Lord. I pray with every fiber of my being that, Lord, you would speak to them and talk to them today. Now, Father, we're calling them from the cities and town, village and hamlet and settlements, state, territories, province, canon, and counties that they live in right now. And we are declaring by faith that they're going to come to the house of the Lord, that they're going to discover for themselves, Lord, the wonderful uh, attributes of righteousness, peace, and joy. Lord, we're calling them right now. Lord, we are calling them, Lord, from every continent like North America and South America. We are calling them from Africa and Europe. We are calling them from Asia. We're calling them from the islands of the ocean. There are literally millions of people that live on islands, Lord, throughout the oceans. We're also calling people, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus from the nether uh, and outermost parts of the world, like, for example, Antarctica, and also the Arctic regions. Lord, we thank you today that angels are protecting them and bringing them to us. Lord, I love that wonderful scripture that says, the angel of the Lord camps around them who fears them. That means that, Lord, we have angelic protection. And Lord, we're asking that right now, Lord, every hindrance, every blockage, every reason, excuse, uh, justification that people use to stay away from the house, Lord, will be broken right now in Jesus' name. That, Lord, their cars are going to start. Lord, that the other distractions that come in people's lives are going to be removed, and they're going to say, I am going to go to the house of the Lord. Father, we're declaring that right now in Jesus' name, that in every situation, the word of God and the house of the Lord will be important to them. We ask for that right now. Now, Father, we know that the house of the Lord is so important to our growth as a Christian. You know, it was the writer of Hebrews who said this, 
Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as some have done, even as the day approaches. The motivation, the reason why we must not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, which even in the time of the writer of Hebrews was beginning to happen, people were abs abs actually abdicating their responsibility and their obligation and duty to the house of the Lord. The reason why we must not abandon is because of the fact that the day is approaching. Today, Lord, I will be sharing in my message about the fact that there we are all standing in the light of eternity. We do not know when you are going to come back. And Lord, that is a message that has been resonating with me. Lord, you allowed me once again to see on the other side of the veil, to be able to see what is in store for us. And it was absolutely wonderful. And Father, I'm grateful for these glimpses, these snapshots, these moments that, Lord, I have been able, Lord, to look into eternity and to see on the other side of the veil. And Father, I pray today that, Lord, this would also motivate me, Lord, to speak in love and to challenge people, Lord, on what is happening on the other side of eternity. That it is a beautiful, it is a wonderful place, and it is something that uh, we're going to enjoy to see. Lord, when I think of the thief on the cross and, and all that went on there, Jesus was hanging on the cross. He had been reduced to human hamburger. And every breath he took was a breath that was could end in eternity. And when he was on the cross, people were mocking him. People were saying, hey, if, if you are the son of God, we will believe in you if you come down from the cross. One thief on the cross actually said, if you are God, you come down and you save us as well. And he mocked Jesus. But the other thief on the cross he said, we deserve what we get. This man is innocent. He said, then he said, will you remember me when you come in your glory? And Jesus said, to, or your kingdom, and Jesus said this, today you shall be with me in paradise. What that man was saying was, I believe in you. And also as well, I would love to be where you are. And Jesus made that promise to him that he would be with Jesus in paradise at the end of that day. Father, what a wonderful uh, situation. Here was a man who all his life had been on the wrong side of the fence. He had been on the wrong side of the tracks. And yet in that moment, when he came face to face with true and righteousness. Lord, he recognized it and he, that, that the confession of faith brought to him that opportunity to be with Jesus. And that's what Lord, we should be uh, looking forward to and, and uh, going after with every fiber of our being and trying to bring as many people as we can with us. Father, that's what we should be doing. When I think of Rex Humbart, when he was eight years old, you gave him, Lord, a, 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 you showed him hell. And that was what motivated him to be a preacher of the gospel and to have as many people as possible to go into heaven. That was what his goal, that was his aim, that is what his desire was. Father, our desire today is to see as many people come to know you as we can possibly see happen. Father, that's why we're praying the way that we're praying. That's why we're going after this. And Lord, 
I pray today that, Lord, we would understand the incredible opportunity that we have. Yes, it says that there is going to be a falling away, but also as well, we have the wonderful promise of Joel 2.28 that says in the last days, you are going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Our sons and our daughters are going to prophesy. Our old men are going to dream dreams and our young men are going to see visions. It is going to be a wonderful day. Lord, I'm believing today, right now, in this moment, that you are going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh. I believe that, Lord, today, and I'm going to declare by faith that, Lord, today in churches right across this nation, and around the world, that there is going to be a move of God. That there is going to be a breakthrough right now by the blood, the word, and the name. We are going to see our children, Lord, having revival. I'm believing that, Lord, not only are we going to see children, young people, young adults, young families, and families with teenagers, but I believe that, Lord, today, you are going to move upon the empty nesters and the seniors as well. From the youngest to the oldest, Lord, you are going to pour out your spirit in a powerful and dynamic way. I believe that, Lord. I believe that, Lord, when the word of God is preached today by anointed proclaimers, that, Lord, you are going to open up the windows of heaven. And even in assemblies and churches, Lord, where you are not honored, where the preachers are talking about the things of this world and elevating and applauding lifestyles and ideas that, Lord, are contrary to the Word of God. They are going to begin, O oh God, to raise up prayer warriors and intercessors in those assemblies. And, Father, there, there are going to be people who are going to be listening to what those proclaimers say and say, that's not the Word of God. That's not righteousness. That's not truth. And Father, they are going to confront these proclaimers of the word and say to them, it is now time for you to start preaching the word of God. And Father, I pray today, especially for churches where the word of God is preached, that Lord, you would, there would be a response, a response of revival. Lord, I remember the old days where we would meet with the Lord for a period of time. And Father, that's what's going to happen today. We're going to meet with the Lord for a period of time. And Father, you are going to open up the windows of heaven. You are going to bring a blessing, Lord, upon our time, and we're going to see the beauty of the Lord. Father, we are declaring that right now by the blood by the word and by the name. Open up the windows of heaven. Bring that blessing right now in the name of Jesus. Bring that breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have to see and we have to experience, Lord, that revival right now. Open up those gates, Lord. You know, David many, many times said, sing to the Lord. He said, praise him in his sanctuary. David was a man who loved to worship the Lord. He was a man who loved to experience the beauty of the Lord and the power of the Lord and the majesticness of the Lord. Father, we are going to have a breakthrough today in the name of Jesus. We're going to experience, Lord, the presence and the power of and the victory and the breakthrough of God. We're believing for that today. Lord, do not hold back your blessing today. Open up the windows of heaven, we're asking. Lord, today in the name of Jesus, not only infiltrate our services, but completely dominate our services. You today, we are asking to sovereignly move in our services. And Lord, when the word is preached and when prayers are offered, Lord, we're believing today that, Lord, there is going to be a breakthrough. Lord, I pray today that every 
praise and worship session is going to be absolutely fantastic. Absolutely moving in powerful and dynamic ways. Lord, I believe for that today. I believe that, Lord, you are going to open up those windows of heaven. I believe that, Lord, you're going to bring that blessing today. I believe that, Lord, today we are going to see a great and powerful move of God. Lord, I believe that, Lord, this is the Sunday that, Lord, we are going to see people, Lord, coming back to you, experiencing, Lord, a great awakening. You know, it was Jonathan Edwards who had spent three days and three nights pouring out his heart to God. He had heard the words of John Knox, who said, give me Scotland, lest I die. And the Jonathan Edwards, as he was preparing for his message, he said, Lord, just like John Knox, we need a breakthrough. We need an awakening here in New England. So he said, give me New England, lest I die. And then he went and preached his message, which happened to be titled, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And as he was reading it, the conviction of the Holy Spirit fell upon the crowd that was listening to his message. And many were saying, Mr. Edwards, Mr. Edwards, please stop. I am the, the, the conviction of God was so powerful on that place. Father, we need that type of conviction. We need that type of breakthrough today. And so, Lord, today I ask that this would be the moment that we would close our eyes and we would say, God, if there is any unrighteous way in me, forgive me. Lord, that's what we're doing today. Lord, cleanse us from those unrighteous moments and those unrighteous things. And Father, open the windows of heaven and bring that blessing again, Lord, upon our situation. Do not allow anything, Lord, to keep us from that wonderful move of God and breakthrough today. Lord, that's what we're asking for in this moment. Lord, as we close and finish our final moments together in prayer, it is our desire and our aim, Lord, that each and every service would be powerfully impacted by you. From the invocation to the benediction, that, Lord, you would bring that wonderful revival, that wonderful renewal, that wonderful transformation, Lord, of your people today in the name of Jesus. And that, Lord, each and every single one of us would understand that we are living in the light of eternity. And because we are living in the light of eternity, Lord, that we would uh, designate the goals and priorities of our lives towards eternal things. And remember, that we are looking for a city whose maker and builder is God. That, Lord, as the old song says, I may be satisfied with a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. Lord, thank you for this today. And thank you, Lord, for our time today in prayer. And we ask your blessing upon it now, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, of course, I want to give you a personal invitation today. I am the pastor of Cornerstone Community Church in St. Albert. If you are in the greater Edmonton area, we're going to have a wonderful service today, and uh, we would love to have you join us. You can come to our service. We meet at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045. Our service starts at 11 a.m. And uh, we would love to have you join us for that service. Also as well, if you happen to be uh, have Facebook, we have Cornerstone St. Albert. That is, of course, our handle. And we'd love to have you join us at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. 
Thank you for joining me. My name is Robert Dean Steele. God bless you. And don't forget also to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like what you were seeing, press the like button. God bless you and have yourself a great and godly day.